So let's see here, we got Summon, which is exactly the same as Ophelia, I think. And then she has only a dagger, so she's like the only one with one weapon. And she has one ally's physical attacks become more powerful for two turns and deal heavy dark damage to a single foe. I remember this being really strong. This takes 22. Oh my damage! Okay, Cyrus is kind of massive now. With the the new skill and also don't start things you can't the 50 magic boost. He is kind of huge. That's a lot of enemies. My turn. I kind of miss Ophelia's hit everything move. But I still have this, and I still have Cyrus. Don't start things you can't finish. He's just back there reading. He's just over there reading, and every once in a while we're like, hey Cyrus, can you annihilate everything? It's like, sure. Fight with honor. <laughs> Out of my way. So, I didn't really the realize this when I played the first time, because, like I said, I only played Primrose and then maybe one or two other characters, the battle is truly but Primrose is kind of like straight support, it seems. I mean, she has her one high-level, or really strong magic attack. That's a... a niche element. But like... She is really weak otherwise. See what your skills are like. They gotta like all be buffs. Augment a single allies elemental attacks, augment a single allies physical defense, dark damage to all foes, increase the single allies speed, cause a curious effect to occur one time. Yeah, she is just straight support, which I mean, she's a dancer, it makes sense. But I actually kind of like how she's very specifically a certain uh, class. Because her... Well, I don't really like the fact that her talent is just a copy of Ophelia's. That's kind of lame, but... You know, her, her talent is just a copy of someone else's. Her path action is just a copy of someone else's. She only gets one weapon. So, like... 
she is very pigeonholed into her buff abilities. That is basically all she does. But they seem really good. I mean, especially like augment a single ally's elemental attacks. So I buff Cyrus and then he just absolutely annihilates everything. I mean, even just buffing Ulbrich was pretty strong already. See, it's funny because, like, getting Primrose now, she feels really pigeonholed and weak. Uh, but playing as Primrose first, I was like, whoa, she has a really strong dagger, she has a really strong magic attack, and she can buff people. Like, she's the whole deal. You know, she's got everything. Little did I know that actually she's kind of, like, weak at everything. <laughs> Everyone else has two weapons, and her way. magic is only one element that is kind of a niche element. How about you? I will cut you down! But when you play her first, you don't really have the context, and her regular attack is, like, strong because... You know, she's your only character. And her magic attack says, like, does massive damage or whatever it says. So, yeah, I was, like, confused. I was like, she's a dancer, but she's got, like, all these tools. It's because everyone else's tools are way better. Is that holy element? Light. The peacock strut. The peacock strut. <laughs> what? Why does she say it out loud like a Pokemon? The battle is truly joined. She'll be really fast, because Therion's obviously the the fastest. She's already faster than Cyrus and Ulbrich. So yeah, she's gonna have a massive speed stat. I hope she gets a really good evasion stat too, because that would make a lot of sense. And that would be at least something she could have as a high stat. She needs to get, like, really high evasion and really high max SP, and then she'll be really useful. But if all her stats are just poop except speed, she's going to be kind of a liability. Uh, I considered it, but just haven't made the decision yet. I kind of like Ulbrich better than on it. I'm ready. Um, but I haven't really like taken the time to compare them. I just had Ulbrich already, and Ulbrich was low level, so I took him so he get some way. levels. I like how Ulbrich's ability is actually like usable. I mean, I guess Onyx is too, but not as big of a fan. Try this. I am ready. I expected 
Cyrus to be strong because he's like the black mage. Black mages are always pretty strong. Strong, but squishy, you know? But like, he's kind of crazy strong. <laughs> because like AOE seems to be really important. I will cut you down! AoE seems to be really important because a lot of the fights have a lot of enemies. The thrill of the fight. And Cyrus has like massive damage and AoE. And like, okay. Like, especially Blizzard. These three moves are like crazy. Cause there, there's kind of like two things you want to focus on. You want to focus on AoE because there's a lot of enemies. And you want to focus on multi hits because of the way the lock system works. And this does both. It hits everyone, and it hits everyone twice, so, like, it breaks a bunch of locks, and it hits all the enemy. Like, it's it's just... It does it all. Like, with Ulbric, with Ulbric, the trade-off is, like, either you use his big sweep to hit everything once, or you use a charged-up regular attack to hit one enemy a couple of times. So, like, you can either break the lock of somebody and stun him, or you can hit everyone, but then you're probably not going to stun them. But with Cyrus, he could do both, if they're weak against the element. Say, so he just seems... He just seems... way too good. At the moment. I am ready. The Peacock Strut. The Peacock Strut. Victory shall be mine. <laughs> now, what next? Uh, all night. Fight them down. I am ready. Ah! Oh, here. Primrose is up to seven now, at least. And we, like, all just went up a level, so we're all healed for the boss. I'll make this quick. I am ready. It's kind of crazy. We've been playing for 12 hours. We don't even have the whole party yet. I was too lenient with the girl. I won't make 
that mistake again. No! Get that too quickly. Different. Always standing tall. Proud. No matter how hard it takes. Looking at you. It gave me strength. You survived. Is it finally over? I must say, at least her last performance had some life. If she'd shown that sort of potential earlier, I might have kept her on longer. Enough. What was that? I have danced enough for you. This was the last night that I belonged to you. Oh, was it now? So some wheels do turn in that pretty little head of yours. Here I thought it a waste as empty as the desert. I saw you for the foul swine you are the first time I laid eyes on you. You're nothing but a stupid whore! You would have died on the street if not for me! You have given me nothing. I have always danced on my own two feet. I have always chosen where I step. Who do you think you're speaking to, whore? Jeers, the beatings, the dishonor, I endured it all. All for this day, the day that man appeared before me. I need your stage no longer. I dance for myself now. You forget yourself, little kid. But, but I understand. This is just a little show, yes? You wanted to see your master proud. Fine! Very well! You've had your fun! <laughs> that naughty mouth of yours belongs to me! Put it where it belongs, and if you please me to my satisfaction, I will overlook your impertinence. <laughs> Master, go pleasure yourself. <laughs> Wrong answer, kitten. 
You know what I do with cats that bite, don't you? I put them down. Just like that one. It's a shame, Primrose. You were always my favorite. What a waste. Yes, a terrible, terrible shame. The only shame is that I could not do this sooner, Master. Do you hear that? Do you hear the intro into the boss theme? Dude, I could sit here, I could sit here and talk about what we just watched for like the whole rest of the stream. Like, holy cow. It's crazy how good Primrose's section is. And I played this first before. It's probably why I felt like the other stories were kind of like I guess basic or just kind of like simple, you know? Because this one is like insane. I feel like I just played a whole game. I feel like from the beginning of her story to like now, it feels like we played an entire RPG. Like, it's crazy. <laughs> oh, that part. So like, I where do I even begin? Like. I already talked before about how she's like a really cool character because she goes through all of this and like we understand her motives and stuff. But even like, even like the boss we're fighting is so much more emotional. Whereas the other ones were more like kind of just their first stepping stone, you know? Like the bosses with all the other characters were just kind of like a stepping stone into their story. Whereas this feels like the climax of a huge story that was really only like the past five minutes <laughs> but like this is such a cool finale to this and I love that I love that art of him I love how he has a chair and a thing of wine oh man it's so good it's like his big red nose and his bald head and then he's holding the dagger behind him like that has got to be one of the greatest sprites I've ever seen that is incredible sprite work you get so much out of just that sprite. Like his whole demeanor in the dagger behind his back and his legs crossed. Like, oh my God, that's so good. But uh, man, I just, I, I can't, I can't get over how good this opening to Primrose is and now like I love the implication this has because everyone else's story is like pretty simple and like lighthearted for the most part Ulbrich's not so much uh, but like even Ulbrich's like it, it feels like they're a bit more like typical RPG lighthearted we're gonna go do the thing and in Save the World kind of stories. And then Primrose has this, like, dark, you know, her her past is dark, her present is dark, her future, what she's trying to do is dark, she's out for revenge, and, like, nothing's gonna stop her no matter what, she will go through any, any horrible thing to get her revenge. So she's so different than the rest of the characters, but then she's the dancer. Like, she's the the pretty dancer who buffs the party and is, like, witty. And so, like, I love the, the difference between her look and her style in combat and, like, the way she talks and stuff. And then her having, like, the darkest story of all the characters. It's so cool. It's such a cool, like, contrast between her story and her character. She just stands out so much. I mean, she is by far my favorite. By far the most interesting character and like unique character of the bunch. And had the best opening. 
I'm glad I played her first last time, but I'm glad I got her almost last this time because it's made me appreciate her story so much more. I wonder if I did this. And then I did Primroses, if it would be like a different buff. The lion dance. Or would they stack or like okay, they just stack turns. So now Ulbrick stronger for seven turns. How's it gonna zoom me? That was the other thing too. So like when we were in the when we were in the uh, the desert town, I had mentioned that the music kind of was weird. Like it didn't really fit. It felt more like a, a '60s like film noir style sounding. We're solving a mystery on the streets kind of song. Uh, but then. When Yusufa was given, like, her monologue, there was, like, an amazing, like, piano mix with the noir-sounding song. And it was, like, incredible. Like, I gotta get that song. That song was, was amazing. I want to, like, learn to play that song right now. I actually got my, my keyboard hooked up finally. I'm gonna start trying to, to get back into learning piano or at least, uh, you know, fiddling around with it. I might honestly try to learn the, the basic part of that song. I am ready. Because that was, that was something special. The peacock struck. The battle is truly joined. I will cut you down! I'm not going to be able to cancel that. Oh, he's weak against ice. That's going to be, uh, that's going to be a good thing. Place. Victory shall be mine. I don't want my healer. Victory shall be yeah, I was kind of hoping that Primrose had a heal, but I don't think she does. Use this. Therion. Go <laughs> think about 100 bits, Garfield. It's quite the amazing game already. Cyrus's turn. The peacock strut. The peacock strut. Alright, you ready for this? We're about to absolutely give him the Victory ultimate business. Here we go. Fully charged and buffed Blizzard. And he's weak against it. 
Oh. <laughs> See you later, loser. Okay. Usually the boss fights are like really long too. <laughs> it just killed him in one break of the lock. What the heck? I wasn't expecting that. I mean, I did more than that. More than 3,000 damage to some of the other bosses. You always were different from the rest. The fire in your eyes, it burned brighter than any others. I have seen many a girl in my years, but none quite like you. You fascinated me from the start. Come, Primrose. Won't you dance one last dance for me? the dancer yourself in the end. <sighs> Guess we won't be needing this anymore. The village of still snow. I'll need to pack some warmer clothes. Farewell. She probably won't though. She's probably just gonna wear that the whole game. And with that master, I do believe my debt is paid. Oh, epic finale. Yusufa. We are free at last, my friend. And so Primrose sets out from the shifting sands to a land of swirling snow in her quest for vengeance against the three foul crows. Where this dance will lead her, none can say. Yeah, genuinely, why Primrose's story, I'm, I'm good here. We can just wrap it up. We can wrap up the Let's Play. I'm good to go. <laughs> that was, that was so good. Like, it was just as good as I remember. Maybe better than I remembered it. I remembered really liking her story, but holy cow, she just blew everyone else out of the water. I learned something with you. Physical defense, dark damage to all, allies speed. I'm not really sure what speed would do to help. Cause a curious effect to occur. I, I mean, I gotta see what that is, right? Status augmentations you grant to allies will persist for one additional, additional turn. Is there any other game other than Nino Kuni where characters change into weather appropriate gear as you travel? Um. Hmm, I can't really think one off the top of my head. Especially Square. Square really likes to keep the characters in the same clothes the entire game, and if there is any change in clothes, it's like a big, massive moment in the story. They're like. They've always been really, uh... They put a lot of emphasis on character design and, like, clothing and stuff. The the character of the clothing... The, the clothing of the character defines the character a lot. And so they always keep the same clothes the whole game. It's, like, important to their character design. From Square's view, I think.
even in their newer game, like Final Fantasy 16, there's like a moment where a character gets a new outfit. You know, it's like, that's always been a square kind of thing. Kingdom Hearts does it too, yeah. So I don't expect any square games to be that way. Um, you mentioned Nino Kuni. Nino Kuni has a really cool, like, whenever you go to an area, they have, like, clothes that fit the area. Um, I'm sure there's other games that have done it, but I can't think of any off the top of my head. I'm ready. Uh, I guess Kingdom Hearts kind of does with, like, some of the Disney worlds. But... Kingdom Hearts also has the same deal with, like, big moments in the story when they change clothes and, like, Sora's clothes are literally, like, the source of some of his powers and stuff. Alright, let's see what Bewildering Grace does. Oh, it's only me. Oh, our whole... Po Whoa, okay, that's cool. I wonder if it's random, what we get. I will cut you down! <laughs> Wait, was that... Did you mean to type Nino Punishment? As like a joke? Or was that a typo? And in which case... How do you typo Cooney into Punishment? Out of my way. <laughs> your, your phone is cooked, dude. <laughs> if it went... All the way from Cooney to punishment. What happened? <laughs> yeah, uh. Nino Cooney's an awesome game, one of my favorites. You should have studied harder. One of my favorite RPGs. Top 10 RPGs. Maybe top 5. just sit here and steal SP with Therion and then like gift it to Cyrus. And Therion could basically just be a support character. I mean, you get so many items in the game that I feel like it's more worth it just to throw plums every turn, but just saying I could do it. I'm ready. Let's see what we get this time. Oh! I can double up. BP fully restored. Whoa! Oh, but our defense went down. The battle is truly joined. But we all got full buffs. Holy! I will cut you down. is honestly pretty awesome. Even if it gives me bad effects sometimes, I feel like it's really good. Where's the nearest tavern? happy that we get to experience all these characters in their entirety you know like too many times I play an RPG and I like too many of the characters and I have to kind of leave one out but here it's like sure we have our moving party which is only going to be four characters but then we have to play out each individual character story to its fullest and when we're in that character story obviously we have to use them so 
I really like that from like a game, from like a story aspect of like no characters left behind or no characters like just has one part of the story and then that's it. Like they all have an equal amount in the story because I like all the characters. I, I like them all. I, I have my favorites obviously, but I like them all so far. We only have one more to talk to. Um, but I like it from a mechanic standpoint, too, because I'm going to be forced to use different organizations of teams. Um, I mean, it looks like it's going to be Therion, and then whichever character I'm forced to use, and then two more. So they're probably not going to differ that much, but at least I'll have to use a different character for each part. So it won't feel like we're just doing the same thing throughout the whole game. So I, I really like it from a story aspect and from a mechanical aspect. I still have my gripes with, like, all the stories feeling really separated and not really coming together, which we haven't really given them a chance to yet, but I just I feel like they're not going to. Um, just the way they've kind of all been shown to us at this point and from what other people have said. Um, but I like the, I, at least I like the general concept, you know, and realize I can zoom out. That's nice. Um, and with everyone saying how much better Octopath Traveler 2 is, it's getting me excited that maybe in Octopath Traveler 2, they do a better job of connecting the stories and doing a couple of the things that I would like to see from this game. But then also having the general premise still be the same. Because I like the premise. It's only some of the ways that they implement it that I don't like, but... Times two. Holy crap, man. You legit get anything from that. That move is so fun to use. You can get anything. Um, even with the small amount of gripes I have, I'm like really over the moon with this game right now. Especially after Primrose's story. Alright, see ya. Cyrus got his turn. Whoops. Whoops. Everything's dead. So <laughs> Cyrus got his turn. Hate to see that happen. Clear brook. Is that where we're going? Yeah. What's up here? Some kind of tunnel. Twin Falls. Let us fight with honor. Look at those goofy fight. snails. Giant slug. Part of me wants to like go into one of the high level areas and like farm a little bit. Because I bet you it'd be a really efficient farm. But like I just killed Primrose's boss with one move, so I think I'm probably doing all right. <laughs> I, will cut you I don't really want to get too much stronger yet. I am ready. No effect. Oh, that's really nice. Time to die. I think I've ruined Primrose for myself. I, I can't 
I don't want to do any of her other attacks. I just want to use that every time and see what it does. Time to teach you a lesson. I am ready. Strength boost. And something just put to sleep. Yeah, it's like when you get Metronome for the first time in Pokemon, you just want to spam it for the whole rest of the game. I mean, I don't think it has that many different effects, but like so many of the effects are really good. But I kind of don't care what I get. They're all good. I mean, they're not all good, but they're, the good ones outweigh the bad ones so much that it always feels worth using. I'm gonna laugh when I use it once and it like auto kills me. I'm gonna get like game over effect. This area. An interesting dilemma. I am ready. Actually, gonna use this. The lion dance. Because I'm pretty sure this will kill them all. My turn. that they were all weak against sword and I could also break them right before Ulbrich's turn. I really love that this game has the same kind of setup as Final Fantasy X. So you can kind of plan your attacks because with the lock system it makes it really cool. You can like plan out a break right when you get a character's turn. Like, that's what I did with uh, Primrose's bosses. I, like, set up the break so it would break right before Cyrus's turn. So I could get max damage. Thus Oops. Oops. All Cyrus's. I was going Friar? Not yet, no. One of the more uh, requested games as of late, though, Valkyrie Profile. I do have Valkyrie, uh, what you call it? Valkyrie. We just talked about it the other day. Uh, Chronicles on the trophy list, but those are different. They're not even connected, are they? They're just like totally different games, right? Or are they connected? Valkyrie Popsicles? I don't know anything about the Valkyrie series really, so. The strongest woman in the village. Okay. I, I wouldn't uh, discern that from 24-year-old girl. Doesn't even look like she has shoes. The fact that which she takes tremendous pride. Word of her physical prowess has spread far and wide, inviting invitations of marriage from equally formidable men. However, the only invitations she cares to entertain are from challengers seeking to test their might against hers. Well... Let's see how strong you are. <laughs> she said eek. With honor. Eek. Victory shot. Victory shot. 
don't have any Valkyrie fans oh, here. Mango, are you a Valkyrie fan? Can you tell me if they're connected? Alright, she wasn't that strong. I grow strong. A fine fight that was. You have my thanks. Thank you for beating me up. Appreciate it. Ooh. Oof. Very unassuming village here. I was talking about Valkyrie Chronicles. I didn't think that Valkyrie Chronicles was related, but I wasn't sure. The young apothecary of Clearbrook, Zeph lost his parents to the Great Pestilence at an early age, and thereafter had to care for his sister, Nina, by himself. As she is his sole surviving family, he feels this responsibility keenly and has resolved to place her welfare above his own. A hidden item. But where? Dubious gold ore. I think that's uh, one of the chests only Therion can open. Tightly locked purple chests. That does look purple. According to my research, the snakes inhabiting the cave of Riho, but be the large or small, can be lopped in two with a few solid swings of an axe. The nasty froggins that roam the roads will not go down so easily, but so long as one has the means to freeze the dangable things, one should muddle through somehow. Well, that's kind of cool. It gave me like a hint at the weakness of the frogs. Whoa! What is this? Full, full strength elderly woman? What in tarnation? I can't even scrutinize her. Just found the elderly woman final boss. Did you know that rivers in these parts flow beneath the surface as well as above? Well, they do. All sorts of interesting things float here from other towns in the Riverlands. Why is she just like secretly the final boss? Holy cow. I am frightened of that woman. She really buy this for Primrose. Gives her a ton of elemental attack. New shield. People start with Valkyrie Chronicles 4 since it's often considered the best. You mean in the Chronicle series, though? Oh, there's the item. Sleep weed. Yeah. What's up? Therion in front just so I actually have a choice to take out Cyrus I don't think I will but 